and just Shabbat the Lord right now. Hallelujah. Father, we exalt you. Father, we glorify you. Hallelujah. We worship you, God. Father, we are desperate for you this morning. So God, come and dwell in our midst. Come on, church. Open up your mouths. Come on, church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, church. Hallelujah. 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 We exalt you, Jesus. Let your presence fall again. Your glory like the rain over us. Over Let your presence fall again. Your glory, your glory like the rain over us, over us, God, over, over us. us. Oh, let's sing it one more time. 
and let your presence fall. Let your presence fall again. Anybody wants his presence in this house? Your glory like the rain over us, over us. We want you to reign over us, God, over us. So we sing, we are desperate. We are desperate, desperate for you. fall again sing your glory like the rain your glory like the rain over us over us we're singing over us jesus over us oh lord let your presence fall let your presence fall god let your presence fall again
for you, God. We're desperate for you. Father, we're desperate for you. Hallelujah. He's worthy. He's worthy, Father. We're desperate. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Come on, can we just lift our praise in this house? Hallelujah. We're desperate for you. We're desperate for you, Jesus. Father, we're desperate for you. Somebody needs healing, God, so we're desperate. Somebody needs a breakthrough, God, so we're desperate. Somebody needs to be delivered, God, so we're desperate. God, somebody needs you to make a way when there seems to be no way, so we're desperate, God. We're desperate, God, we're desperate, God. Hallelujah. We're desperate for you, God. We're desperate for you. We are desperate, desperate for you. We are desperate for you. Hallelujah. Let's join in singing the hymn, What a Fellowship, What a Joy Divine, Leaning on the Everlasting Arms. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a fellowship, what a joy divine, Leaning on the Everlasting Arms. What a blessedness, what a peace is mine, leaning on the everlasting arms, leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all. journey mercy for helping us to be here this as a family today father thank you for guiding us and protecting us throughout the week father i want to thank you for helping us to be here to say that you are awesome you are worthy and you are honored to be praised father has we put this service before you lord you go before lord you bless you sanctify i leave everything entirely to your hand as i tell you thanks in jesus name i pray amen Good morning, church. 
our scripture reading will be taken from 2 Corinthians 5, 14 to 21. For the love of Christ constraineth us, because we thus judge that if one died for all, then were all dead. And that he died for all, that they which should with they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. Wherefore, henceforth know we no man after the flesh. Yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we him no more. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God, which hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. To wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors of Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. 21st and last, for he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Thanks be to the Lord. Greetings, ambassadors. Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Welcome into this holy place. What day is it today? What Sunday is this? Women's Sunday. And so the women are in charge today. Okay, why am I here? To welcome you. <laughs> On behalf of our the chairman of the women's ministry, our host pastor, Bishop Dr. Clement Clark, Our speaker for today, the local women's ministry president, Councillor Faithlin Williams. The members of the Churches and Pastors Council, as well as the women's ministry. Welcome, welcome. Do we have anyone here for the first time? Any first time visitors here in the sanctuary? Please stand. And, ah, yes, welcome. Welcome, welcome. We're, we're very happy that you have been able to share with us. And uh, let this not be the first, the last time that you're here. You're all, our doors are always open. And for those online, uh, welcome as well. Please put in the chat uh, that you're a first time visitor. And uh, you can also, if you're seeking salvation, there's a little thing there that you can always sign up. So, are you laden and heavy burden? Jesus said, ye who are laden and heavy burden, take my yoke upon me, for it is light. You know, many of us focus a lot on our challenges, you know, but we need to focus on the goodness of God. Has God been good to you? Has God really been good to you? Yes. Psalm 111 says, Praise ye the Lord. I will praise the Lord with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright and in the congregation. The works of the Lord are great, sought out of all them that have pleasure therein. His work is honorable. God good? Is there any darkness in God? There is no darkness. His work is honorable and glorious, 
and his righteousness endureth forever. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding of all they that do his commandments. His praise endureth forever. Have a blessed day in the Lord. Please welcome Sister Peter Gay Kirby, the first VP of the Women's Ministry. A wonderful and blessed day to you all. It is good, isn't it, to be in the house of the Lord. Let us not take that for granted. If I did before COVID, I don't do so anymore. It is wonderful. Iron sharpness, iron. And so, you know, on behalf of the women's ministry, we would just love to honor and recognize our bishop, Bishop Clark, Bishop Clement Clark, and his wife. She is here refreshing herself. Sister Clark, you know that she oversees also what goes on with the women's ministry. Did you know that Bishop is the chairman of the women's ministry? For those who didn't know, those who are online and our visitors, if, in case you didn't know. And uh, Reverend Brown is also here, a strong support for our ministry and Brother Brown in charge of all of this wonderful media. And I, so we have to recognize you and really give you honor for all the support that you have given us, prayed for us, and so forth. Likewise, I greet our council members, ministers, and friends here among us. Thank you for your support and prayers. People of God, this morning, well, this is still morning in the first service, some men were recognized for their support of the women's ministry. And I'm bringing this up because I don't want, when you hear women's ministry, women's retreat, women's thing, it means that you cannot take part. Even if you have not been able to make it to meetings as men or women, young people, there is there are, are um, opportunities for support. Men like our very own Bishop Clark, Sheldon Clark, Councillor Conrad Williams, Brother Des, Council Desmond Campbell. We had even a new convert, Joshua Marr. We had even uh, Brother Milton Morris. Did you know that these men have offered and they were recognized for great support for our parish initiative where we would have undergone some projects based on where you will live? I won't to tell you who is first. But um, that, 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 that you listen to first service, but everyone did pour in, and I'm just making a point that you too can play a part. We do have a, a women's retreat coming up. Before that, may I also thank you for your contribution for Yadel. You know we are in charge of February, but it doesn't mean that you, you know, you have to stop giving if you have it still. Let us know, still speak to one of us, or put it in the barrel. But we have had excellent support from you, and we ask you to continue to do so. For those who don't know who Yadel is, that is the girl's home that the New Testament Church of God has uh, um, been, been, been hosting to look after young ladies in some trying times in their life. They have to be somewhere where they are counseled and guided and housed and loved and cared for as they continue on with their schooling and as they grow up as teenagers. Each one can reach one. Sometimes you're buying things for your own daughter, and instead of buying two, um, two for your daughter, buy one for her and set aside one as a gift. Thank you so much. However, our women's retreats, now we have not had one for a while, and I am excited to see what it entails. It is at the very heart of Sister Clark, and she's pouring her all into it. And you know, we all buy into the vision because we catch the heart, her heart, and the heart of the Lord for women. It's the first weekend in May, and it means that it is, you'll see the flyers going around. We will soon put up. So far, we just have an information flyer. Um, to just let you know what it's about. And I'm encouraging you to be a part of it. At $24,000 really in, in, in this time for Friday, 
Saturday and Sunday, if you really consider what that can cover at the, 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 the supermarket, it's, it's nothing much. Really, it's a small investment for a great thing. And as a woman that has many roles to play in the workplace and in the family, I can tell you, it is good to come away. It is good to come away. Maybe leave the children with grandma or daddy or, you know, it is good to come away and to be among other women so that iron can sharpen iron. You'd be surprised to know the gifts, the talent, and the level of anointing of women around you. And you would have not been able to meet them in the, on a typical Sunday with the movement. The Lord is saying, come, come away. Sometimes you need that space. You will be ministered to specifically for women's needs. There will be breakaway sessions where you have smaller sessions where you have a say, where it's personalized, where you are ministered to. You know that you need this. So invest in yourself. You don't have to find all the money at once. You can come on a weekly basis. You can ask friends and family to help support you with a little. Every little mickle makes a model, doesn't it? Also, those of you here who are not attending and you know that you want to lift a woman up, you, the Lord has blessed you at that space so you can be a blessing. Offer some support. Stop by the registration. We usually sit at the back there. And whatever little you have, God will multiply it for you and bless just that woman that was just short a penny. All right? So everyone can be a part of this move. I'm appealing. Stop by even if you're not coming and speak to the Lord. He will tell you how much to pour into someone. So finally, I want to bring up what we're going to be doing on the third Tuesday. That's Tuesday coming, not tomorrow. Tuesday, tomorrow's Monday, right? Tuesday. We are going to have a birthday celebration, a born again um, birthday celebration. And that is for the persons who have been saved or baptized between September to March. So even if you have not been baptized as yet, because we're waiting on Good Friday, come out. We are here to celebrate with you. This is your real, real, real birthday, believe it or not. And so we will be... Um, you will be served communion and then refreshment thereafter. When you come, we want to find out what parish you, you are you were born in. You join up with that parish that's, that adds to their point for their initiative for seeing how many people we can get on board. So looking forward, come out on Tuesday night. Uh, of course, we need members also, mature members. So come along with them celebrate them. The angels are celebrating. It is a good thing. Looking forward to seeing you at the retreat and to see you Tuesday night. God bless. Praise God. It is now time for us to worship the Lord with our tithes and offering. And so I invite you to take your tithes and offering out. God has blessed us. He has blessed us in so many ways. And uh, we always have the opportunity to give back to the work of his kingdom. And we are reminded in his word that if we give, it shall be given unto us. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. And so this morning, when you give, when you worship the Lord, you worship with a willing, free and willing heart and give as God bless you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. Thank you for being our provider. Thank you for caring for us in so many ways. You have opened up doors. You have opened up windows, and you have poured out your blessing upon us. And so this morning, we have the opportunity to come into your house and to give back to your kingdom. For the work of God must continue. The work of God must be done. And so this morning, as we worship you with our tithes and offering, I pray, God, that it will come from a willing heart and not just a feeling that I have to give, but we will find pleasure in worshiping you with our tithes and offering. So I pray, oh God, that you will continue to bless us, continue to provide those 
who do not have jobs, that you will open up doors for them. You will, Almighty God, continue to be their Jehovah Jireh. And Almighty God, they will get that opportunity too to financially give back to your kingdom. So bless this offering and tithes that we will collect this morning. And God, it will be used for the furtherance of your kingdom. And we give you thanks and praise. In your name we pray. Amen. And today is uh, Ladies uh, Sunday, so I'm going to ask the representative to come. We have a $200 march. If you don't have 200 and you have one, bring it. All right? God bless you. Praise team. Hallelujah. <laughs> Up early in the morning. When I hear the birds singing, it sounds like freedom. He's been good to me. Even late in the evening, when the day is ending, I'll still be singing. You've been good to me. Oh, glory, hallelujah. I came running when he set me free. God's been good to me. Redemption story, go run and tell it. He's been good to me. Got a testimony. Your redemption story, go run and tell it. He's been good to me. Oh, I sing glory, hallelujah. I was running when he set me free. Yeah. God's been good to me. When the sun sets free, it's free indeed I'm free, I'm free indeed And I sing glory, hallelujah I came running when he set me free, yeah God's been good to me Just in case there's anyone here who would like to use a card machine, then you could go up to the office on, our, on my left upstairs and you will get the assistance. God bless you. Lord. No, sir. <laughs> All right, we're here to praise God. Isn't that so? Well, let's praise him. Hallelujah. Praise be to the name of Almighty God. It's good to be in the house of the Lord another time. And my brothers and sisters, as you have heard, it is Women's Sunday. And we want to thank God for the women as they continue to do a, a fantastic job in the church. And especially at the EPR. We bless God for... Um, the information given by Sister Peter Gay. Um, Sister Peter Gay, you said that you didn't want to mention the winner. You must talk the winner, man. The winner must be spoken about because they work, so they must be publicly praised. <laughs> so I'm told that Joanna was the overall winner. 
So, Sister Peter gave me going to talk it. <laughs> who, who, who is here from Joanna? Nobody? Oh, that's the only one we can find to hold up to God here. Praise God. Come on, put your hands together for Joanna. But guess what? I hear that my group. I'm the chairman, so you mean, oh, you mean how I'm a part of the women's ministry. I'm the chairman, and so my group comes second. Dark ass. Clap we. <laughs> Thank you so much. God bless you, ladies. Joanna is there? All right, Sister Perkins. <laughs> All right, Dark ass going to beat you next time. <laughs> God bless you, ladies, as you continue to work diligently and faithfully for the Lord. God bless you richly. Um, I want to recognize our associate pastor, Reverend Jennifer Brown, and Brother Brown. I want to greet, you can clap, <laughs> them. And then I want to greet all the members of the church and pastors' council and their spouses. Um, we have a few of the VIPs here. Most were in the first service. Put your hands together for the VIPs. <laughs> Praise God. And then I want to welcome all of my brothers and sisters. God bless you. It's great to have you in church today. I want to say thanks to all those who have led out so far. God bless you as you continue to play your role in advancing the kingdom of God. My brothers and sisters, we have to minister the word of God. Today, none other than the local president of the women's ministry at EPR. And that person is Lord, I don't know who no women's ministry president. <laughs> who is she? Sister Faithlin Williams. All right, she um, is an outstanding speaker. I love to hear her you know, just interpret and impart the word of God. You, I'm sure most of, if not all of you know, that she is an outstanding mathematician, works with the Ministry of Education, and as I call her, the original maths brain from primary school. She has been doing a fantastic job, and she has educated our um, not only our children, but adults as well. Um, as I've said, she is also the women's ministry president of this local church, and she's doing a fantastic job in just guiding and leading this ministry. Um, she's involved in so many other things um, in this local church, but she is a council member. She is a member of the church and pastor's council. And it is such a delight to have her as she ministers the word of God to us today. My brothers and sisters, what a lovely choir. We have to minister before the preacher comes, our sanctuary choir. They are looking Fabulous. Put your hands together for them, please. And they don't only look good, they sing good. And I know they will sing real and minister to us today. And so as soon as they are through ministering, I'm going to ask you please to stand and receive the woman of God as she will share the word of God with us. Put your hands together and welcome the sanctuary required.
up mine eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, the Lord which made heaven and earth. He said, He would not suffer thy foot, thy foot to be moved. The Lord which keepeth thee, he will not slumber nor sleep for the lord is thy keeper the lord is thy shade upon thy right hand upon thy right hand no the moon by night he shall preserve thy soul even forevermore my help my help my
the Lord. You may be seated in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless his holy name. Indeed, our help cometh from the Lord. Thank you. That's our sanctuary choir that ministered so beautifully. And that reminds me of my graduation song that I sang over a couple years ago. I don't remember, but over 10 years ago, bless the Lord. And it is still fresh. It is still ministering. Because we always need the help of God. Hallelujah. Put your hands together for them one more time. Bless the Lord. Praise God. It's indeed an honor and a privilege to serve you in this manner. I am humbled to serve you. Let me just greet my bishop, Bishop Dr. Clement Clark. Blessings is indeed our chairman, the chairman for the women's ministry, always cheering us on. And I need to say something, but I'm coming down to that. Let me greet also our associate pastor, Reverend Jennifer Brown. Put your hands together for her. Hallelujah, great woman of God, our councilmen and women and their spouses, greetings. And ladies, greetings to you all. Men, we love you so much and I greet you well. Love seeing you. I noticed earlier when Rev asked about Dorcas or Joanna, if we have any members from Joanna, some persons couldn't even say Yes, sorry, put your hand up because they didn't know which group you belong to. But let me just help you out a little bit. Joanna, who won the overall prize for the sale of lunch and tickets and the talent drive, and they won big too. Yes, they won big also. That takes in the parishes of Trelawney, Westmoreland, Hanover, St. James, and St. Anne. And your leader is your sister Victoria Perkins. Sis, right, she is around that area. Sister, v and most persons would know her. And then you have Dorcas, which was in second place for that. Dorcas, we have um, Saint Elizabeth, Clarendon, and Manchester. Let me tell you something. That's a little Talawa group. Yes, they are little. But Talawa, the leader, Sister Paulette, where well, she worked assiduously to make sure that her, her group came out in a, in a good position. And don't, don't you take her lightly. And then, of course, we have Abigail, which is Kingston and St. Andrew. Kingston and St. Andrew, what a go on. How you make the country people them come here and beat you? I don't understand it. But the race is not for them. But those who endure to the end, because we are going, we are continuing this talent drive until the end of the church year, until August. And finally, we have Lydia, and Lydia consists of Portland, Saint Thomas, Saint Mary, and Saint Catherine. I'm going to need for really, yes, put your shoulder to the wheel. All right. So that takes care of that. And the final thing I want to say to you is concerning. The, our third Tuesday meeting, it is a combined meeting, men and women, we're having a birthday bashment, born again birthday bashment, and we, we are celebrating persons who got saved or baptized during the months of September to 
March. We'll be coming up with the second part of it. But it doesn't say that if you are not baptized in though any of those months, you should not be here. Please come, get some ideas, and see how we can make the latter part of the year even greater and better. So that is out of the way. Let's get into our message for today. Anybody's hungry? Come on, the bread of life is in the house. And you can be fed now, right now, with bread. Bread from heaven. Hallelujah. Bread that will rejuvenate you. Bread that will lift you up and take you out of any situation that you're in now and just put you into a praise situation. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Our text was read earlier, 2 Corinthians 5, verse 14 to 21. I will not be reading it again, but I want you to turn your Bibles to that space. If you have your smartphone, you can also find it on your phone, as well as from time to time it will be placed on the monitor. Hallelujah. Could you just bow your head with me? Let me just pray hallelujah god i thank you for this moment i thank you that you are here and that god our help comes from you father as i'm about to break bread to your children it is your word lord put it in my mouth lord send it forth with power with clarity lord god just to glorify your name at this point, I decrease, Lord. Increase, Holy Spirit. Have your way and be in our midst, in our midst to bless, to deliver, to save, and to set free. And we give you thanks. And we all say, Amen. I want to share with you on the theme, we are connected to the source. We are connected to the source hallelujah let me testify a little i got saved at a very early age at about age 12. notice i said at about because i don't even remember when the baptist i don't remember what month and so on but i got saved at about that age and when i got saved at that age i was the only christian in my home can you imagine a family yard big family yard with over four families with children and so on it was difficult but nonetheless i must tell you that i strayed a little but in all that time the lord was still connected to me because every time i did something wrong the spirit the holy spirit beckoned me and i'm repenting so the lord was still connected to me although i strayed a little but the connection was never over it never stopped at all hallelujah and there are many other testimonies that i could give i remember when i was at utec studying i took up myself you hear rev sam the maths brain from primary school i love maths and let me tell you i went to utec as a primary trained teacher to do a degree program in math all math and when i went i have to testify i went for three weeks with my money in my purse deciding that if i can't understand the course at all i'm not paying my money because i'm not paying to fail and the long and short of it is that i finally decided to pay and while going through the course it was very rough because talking about over 20 years that I had done CXC, not even CSEC, you know, CXC, and did not. Well, I, I would have entered and done math, you know, in, at different levels and different courses and so on. But not teaching at the high school level made it difficult for me to do the degree program. But I want to tell you, brethren, I know who I am connected to. And so I prayed and I said, God, you did not bring me here for me to fail. And I'm going to pass every course. So you know what I did? I know I had that connection. I also connected with some bright children in the class. 
Yes, I found a, a little click. And we beat the books immediately after the cor a course starts, two to three weeks after it starts, we begin to beat the books. That's our, that was our strategy. And I'm here to tell you, brethren, every class I went to, I got to the lecturer and I said to the lecturer, Sir or Miss, I don't know much so well. So you know what I want you to do? I want you to go to the foundation because if you give me the foundation where this formula comes from or how you come up with this concept, I am good. And they listened. And let me tell you, I have teachers who come to me and say, oh, you see, you don't know maths. Oh, you get B plus. Oh, you get A. I said, don't worry. I know who is helping me. I know who my help comes from. I remember I was doing a very difficult course. And when I saw the grade and the teacher came to me and he said, Faitlin, tell me, how comes this? I said, ask God. I that was my reply, ask God. But I know who I was connected to. And so as I come to share with you this morning, connected to the source, I want you to pay close attention to what we have inside of us. And when we stay connected to the source, what can happen? Hallelujah. So I want you to journey with me as I dissect the text that was read earlier. Just to point out a few, a few references. We'll back it up also. But a few points there that we need to pay attention to. So allow me to whet your appetite a little by giving you a brief account of where we were before we met Christ. Hallelujah. In the creation story, we would have learned that Adam and Eve were the first people. Hallelujah. And of course, Adam and Eve being the first man and first woman, they automatically becomes the mother and father of the earth. And we are their descendants. We are descendants of Adam and Eve. The fact that we were born of a man and of a woman. Hallelujah. Now, everything that, that means, everything that Adam and Eve inherited, we inherit it also. Mighty God. Hallelujah. So therefore, when Adam and Eve sinned into the Garden of Eden and the penalty of death was upon them, we also inherited that penalty. And it is still affecting us today. How many years ago? Over 6,000 years. And it is still affecting us today where we are still dying. Hallelujah. I want you to take that and mark something. If by one man... Death came into the world and all die. Then the converse is true. Whereby one man, life comes into the world. Our life is given to us and we shall live forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I want you to accept that it is in our face. We cannot deny that death is taking place. Whether we want to accept it or not. And I want you to have that kind of faith to say, if the Lord said it before it happened, and it happened then, and it's still continuing now, what he says about us living eternally is going to happen also as sure as night follow day. Come on, why don't you give him glory? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When Adam falls, Adam thought he was disconnected from God to the point where he went and hid himself. My God, he thought that was it. But was God disconnected from Adam? He was not disconnected. He loved his handmaid so much. Yes, made in his own image that he went out calling him Adam. Adam, where are you? And I believe that is happening to us from time to time. We feel like we lose connection with God. Hallelujah. 
But listen to me, if you feel like you lose connection, I want to wake you up this afternoon to let you know that God has not stopped his connection with you. The connection is still there. All you need to do is plug into the source. All you need to do is call him when you need him. Hallelujah. Because he's going to show up right on time. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. Hallelujah. So Adam thought he would have lost connection, but God kept calling. He never left him one inch. And let me tell you something. The word of God is sure. God says in his word, I will never leave you nor forsake you. It does not matter what you have done. It doesn't matter where you have gone. The Lord God promises never to leave you nor forsake you. Hallelujah. Of course, you know, there are some sins like, for example, um, blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. That is one that you, you, that's a deadly one. That's a deadly one. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But we would have seen in scripture where the spirit of God would have left some of these men of old. But at some point in their life, when they confessed their sins, God, of course, would have allowed the connection to take place again. And he came to their rescue. He showed up and delivered them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is important for us to stay connected to the source. My God, I have here an earbud, a Bluetooth earbud. And as it is right here now, it's not connected to anything. So if my phone is ringing in my bag, I cannot hear it. If a message comes in, I can't hear it. It's not connected. But the moment I take it out... And I put it in my ear. I am going to hear, ready to pair. Ready to pair. Can you picture the Holy Spirit saying, I'm ready to pair with you. I'm ready to connect with you. I want you to come up a little higher. But guess what? If the Bluetooth app on my phone is not turned on, no connection can take place. So I want to say to you this morning that you need to turn on your app, your Bluetooth app in the Holy Ghost so the Holy Spirit can connect with you. Hallelujah. It's always in the case, always there. But guess what? If the Bluetooth app is not turned on, there's no connection. It's already connected. Long time, ready connected. But let me tell you this. I want to say to you that just like how this Bluetooth, what do you call it again? This earpiece here. It's connected to the phone and I can pick up any message that comes in. As a little beep comes in, it's the same thing with you. When you're connected to the Holy Spirit, he allows you to pick up things. He shows you things. He gives you that nudge that a message is coming in. He gives you that nudge that an enemy is about to strike. He gives you that nudge that you need to wake up. You need to get to prayer now. It is time to pray. It is time to worship why don't you listen to the voice of the holy spirit and get connected be obedient and do what he says hallelujah hallelujah bless the name of the lord stay connected to the source my god i want to delve into the text now second corinthians 5 where we see here in verse 14 that one man died for all humanity. Now Christ's death was for a purpose. He came to earth not only to, to bring back the relationship with Adam, but also to make the connection with all of us. Hallelujah. The connection was for every boy, girl, woman, man, every single one of us. Hallelujah. And so he died for all of us. And we can just look at it and say, from the moment we were conceived in our mother's womb, you can imagine a punishment waiting for you. A punishment waiting for you because of your connection. 
you were connected to Adam. And so this punishment comes down to you by virtue of your, your Adamic nature. My goodness, my God. And so a death sentence was always hanging over our head. But when Jesus came, he took that death sentence upon him. And there is no need for us to pay the penalty for sin a second time. We don't need to pay the death penalty a second time. Which man go on death road and die? And go back, go die again. Answer the question. So he died once and for all and cannot die again. Hallelujah. Mighty God. So Christ's death, therefore, was the ultimate gift of life for us as we set, and of course it set us right with God through the blood sacrifice of Jesus Christ. This blood sacrifice prevents us from being at odds with God. And I'm going to take you through the, the, my notes here to let you understand how this works. How is it that the blood sacrifice of Jesus prevented us from being at odds with God? Mighty God. So Christ's death did what no other sacrifice could do. His death caused the supernatural to happen. Because Christ died for us, we also died. And just look at um, 2 Corinthians 5, 14. It says, for Christ's love compels us because we are convinced. Ah, we have it there on the monitor. For the love of Christ constraineth us. Because we thus judge that if one died for all, then all were dead. My goodness. That's something that is supernatural. And I want to bring it back to, to Adam. When Adam sinned and that punishment came upon him, that death will take place. And death took place. Just, just look at that scenario, that situation, and look at Jesus Christ. If... We inherit what Adam inherited. How much more will we inherit what Jesus Christ has given us? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus. And so all of us die. When did this happen and how did this happen? You need to know that. So because he died for us, we also being the heritage, the heir of Jesus Christ, we inherit what he got, we inherit all he has, and we are going to be sharing in that glory. Hallelujah. We might not be able to comprehend all of this, but let me tell you this. There is, a, because um, you have one man's death resulting in us dying too, there is also the supernatural connection to the source, which is Christ himself, so much that whatever happened to him affected us in like manner. The supernatural connection not only connects us to Christ's death, but it also connects us to his life as seen in 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 15. Hallelujah. Verse 15. And he died for all that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and was raised again. So the life that we live, we shouldn't be living it as it belongs to us. We are indebted to Christ. Hallelujah. We are indebted to him because we see here that the supernatural connection is extended from death to life. We will live and reign with Christ. Hallelujah. Why don't you give him praise in the house? Hallelujah. My God. Hallelujah. The, su the supernatural connection here is, is really food for thought. But it is very interesting. And it can give you power. It can give you deliverance if you know who you are connected to. If you know what is inside of you, then you need not behave like some wishy-washy Christian or somebody who has to cover and fear when struggles come because you know who you are connected to. Hallelujah. Praise God. So Romans 6 and verse 3 says, Don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death. That's clear. 
Those of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death. So the baptism speaks of baptism with the Holy Spirit, hallelujah, which joins us or connects us to Christ, hallelujah. Now as we join, we are joined to Christ by the Holy Spirit, we are separated from what is called the old life. And so we should not go back to the old man at all. Hallelujah. We should cling huh, to now this new life, this new birth that Christ has given us. And 2 Corinthians 5, 17 tells us about that new life. It says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things. Behold, all things. All things are become new. So once you have accepted the Lord Christ Jesus as your Savior, all things are passed away. All things are passed away and all things become new. Watch me as I take you through this. Hallelujah. Remember that we were connected to Adam and we were destined to die. But now that we are connected to Jesus Christ, the source of life who was raised from the dead and cannot die again, but he lives, he lives forever with the Father. So also we who are now connected to him through baptism of the Holy Spirit will live with him forever. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, turn to your neighbor and say, I'm connected to the source of life. I'm connected to the source of life. Hallelujah. You don't know what you have inside of you. Can you imagine Jesus lives inside of you? He lives inside of you. And you need to plug into that source. Just like I tell you, you know, this is here. And if I don't have my Bluetooth app on, no connection can take place. I have to charge it up from time to time. It runs out of charge. And sometimes we run out of charge also. But we need to now charge up ourselves. Charge yourself with prayer. Charge yourself with fasting. Charge yourself in worshiping God. Charge yourself with reading the word of God. And believing the word of God. Because God will do what he says he will do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mighty God, what a significant change that has taken place in our lives when we become believers in Christ. Young converts, you are here. It feels good, not true. Feel you. Yes, when I just got baptized, I had a power, you see. I felt like I could take on the whole world. That's how I felt. My God, I felt like if the devil come now, I'm ready to tear him apart. Because he had me for a long time, you know. And I told you that I got saved at a very early age. And in my teenage years when the Lord was dealing with me. And calling me back. I remember at one point. I'm going to show you how Satan bad. Stay bad. I remember. When I was saying, my God, I need to go back to church. All my friends, or most of my friends. I had quite a, a few friends who were unsaved. But I had a few who had gone over, you know, left high school and they are now Christians. And you want to hear what the devil said to me? You don't have to worry yourself about that. Because guess what? You will have your friends in hell. Yes, you will have a good time with them. A time poor men don't know the whole concept of hell yet, you know. And he make it look as though a party was going to go on down there. And it was going to be good. We can have our jokes. We can have our laugh time. And he went on and on. But when I saw friends dying young without Christ. And then the Lord dropped it in my spirit. And the thing that came to me. Because I think real deep. The thing that came to me some of the times is, Lord God, what was the last word that came out of that friend's mouth? That's the question. What was his last word? What was her last word? Did she have time to say, Lord, have mercy on me? And so the fear gripped me. Hallelujah. Tell you that. 
even when you are not connected. God is still connected and he's seeking you out. He's searching for you. He's calling you. You just need to answer. You just need to plug in, hallelujah, to that source because it is there saying, ready to peer. Ready to pair. And so connection, he's calling for connection. Hallelujah. Let me run on here. We learn in Romans 5 verse 8 to 9 that God demonstrates his love for us in this. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And since we have now been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? Let me tell you something. Let me, let me talk to you about the word justified. What that really means. You see the word justified? We can get three words from it. Just. If. I. Just. If. I. You can tell you why it sound like I sometimes. The English language have how many, how many different sounds. Reverend Brown is a language teacher over there. It has a whole heap of sound for one letter. So we can get just if I. So let's now put that into the, into the verse. Because I am justified by Christ's blood, God treats me just if I had never sinned. Come on, come on, come on. You don't catch it. I want you to say it with me. Because I am justified by Christ's blood, Let me get to you again. Because I am justified by Christ's blood, God treats me just if I had never sinned. And I am saved from the wrath of God. I am saved from the wrath of God through Christ's blood. Let me tell you something. I want to, I want to take you through that a little here. God, when God looks on us, Hallelujah. He doesn't see our sin, you know. It's out of the picture. It's out of the way. Jesus Christ took our sins, bore our sins in his body over 2,000 years ago. Every single one of them was nailed to the cross. Hallelujah. And his blood washed us clean, clean. Hallelujah. My God, you don't get it. You don't get it. Hallelujah. Can I say to you that Jesus Christ, I, 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 I want to be like him. Jesus Christ took our sins and give us our, gave us his righteousness. A filthy person like me. Huh? A filthy person like me. I was messed up. I was broken. I was heading down a path of destruction. I didn't know who I was. Hallelujah. My goodness. But Christ came and he called me, kept calling me. And the minute I went back, he cleaned me up and he stripped me of all the sin, of all the mess, of all the crime, of all the mire. And he clothed me, put on a new clothing, a clothing of righteousness. Hallelujah. And I am justified by his blood. And so that clothing of righteousness, when God looks, that's all he's seen. The clothing of righteousness. He sees his son's blood upon you. Hallelujah. Why don't you just give him some praise in the house? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus took our crime. He took our sin and put it on his record. He never had no record of sin. His record was clean. But it became stained with our sin. My goodness. It became stained with our mess, with our problems, with our sicknesses. It became stained. So he took that record and he did away with it. Hallelujah. It's done away. We don't have those anymore to pay attention to because Jesus put them on his record and all God is seeing is his blood, his righteousness on us. Can I tell you something? 
that Jesus Christ who lives inside of us keeps beckoning, keeps calling, keep longing for us to have a relationship with him. If you don't have a relationship with somebody, you can't talk to them, you know. When you have a deep relationship with somebody, you can tell them just about anything. Hallelujah. You have some people who you share certain things with. And you have some people who you, make, you better make sure you say. You know, people say, ah. Because if you say, ah, they are going to say, you say, ah, 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 ah. So you better be careful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are connected to the source Jesus Christ, the ultimate sacrifice for sin. So God declared us innocent. My God. Because of the blood of Jesus Christ. And we are reconciled with him. See so that word reconcile? It means that you were out of relationship. You were out of connection with somebody. Let me tell you something. It is good to testify. What did I say? The word of God says, we overcome by the word of our testimony and by the blood of the lamb. I remember when in my early years of marriage, you see people come to church and you see them look nice and they are praise God and so on and they are gone. Sometimes you need to take a little stock and see what is happening. But in my early years of marriage, after I met this lovely gentleman, this dark, handsome gentleman, Satan never wants to show him up to certain people. But all of a sudden, when he looks good and God fix him up, Satan just turns some people out of the workplace for them to look on. And they're not only looking on, you know, they're moving also. Did you hear what the preacher said last week, Rev? How many women looking at you? A nine. It was seven. But it's now nine. But anyway, the Lord God would have been there for me in those early years. I remember we were having our communication challenges and other challenges and things would have been difficult. And let me tell you something. Is it self? Self is an embarrassing thing. It is so proud. It is so puffed up. And I remember one time when the difficulty struck, you know, and I said, God, I'm just going to pack up. And I'm going to walk. And if my mother asks me anything, I'm just going to give it to her. Self that, you know. If my, and that's the first person I got to, because I love my husband bad. If my mother asks me anything, I'm going to just give it to her. And I go on and go on and go on. Until nothing is happening. I don't go nowhere because I can't go anywhere. And I remember... When the Lord said to me, why don't you just get into my word? So I took my focus off my situation and I was now focusing on God. I was doing my connection. I was building my relationship with God and he was now speaking to me. My God, Conrad is one of the loveliest gentlemen. He just can't, don't, you can't be vexed with him. He doesn't know how to do that. I must tell you, does not know how to do that. So he always come. When we want to keep the malice, rev, not at all, not in that house at all, somewhere else. All right? And so the Holy Spirit spoke to me one night. And I said, me, nothing I saw, word. Everything locked down. Everything locked down. I'm going still to the dinner, put it on the table. I'm still going to do the clothes, everything. But the Holy Spirit said, you need to forgive and move on. You need to forgive. I mean, some women are women now forgive nobody. And the Holy Spirit said, Look here now. You see when them go out there, and you see when them do all sorts of things. And what listen to me. I was now challenging the Holy Spirit, the source that I should be connected to. And I'm connected to him because he's speaking to me. And I remember one night when I turned my back, so. And the Holy Spirit said, you need to forgive. Let me tell you something, you know. Connection to the Holy Spirit is a, is a dangerous thing, you know, Rev. That I may teach our Sunday school, you know. And every Sunday school lesson was about this forgiveness. Every Sunday school lesson just run me down, so. And the Holy Spirit in on me back. 
How can you teach this lesson and you don't want to forgive? How can you tell the children to forgive? And you and I'm like, Lord, I'm going to stop teaching Sunday school. But I cannot stop teaching Sunday school. That's where my passion lies. My God. And so the Holy Spirit talked to me. I'm like, me, me can't, me can't bother. And the Holy Spirit had a conversation with me, you see? And said, remember, when you were messed up, I did not look on your sin. I welcomed you. I forgave you. Why is it so hard for you to forgive? Hallelujah. And I saw a little petty something, you know. I saw a little petty something. We're not looking at no big adultery and nothing like that. Petty. And we just get vexed. You know, two different people coming from two different backgrounds. Can't see eye to eye. My goodness. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me. I'm talking about the connection of the Holy Spirit. And I said, God, I love you. And I really don't want to miss heaven. I don't want to die. And the Lord got me in a corner. And when he backed me up and talked to me. And said, you need to let go. You need to forgive. And when I did that, let me tell you something. That was the breakthrough for many things. Hallelujah. That was where breakthrough came in for many things. Jesus. I'm telling you, brethren. When you... I'm coming from a life where when I tell you that I'm vexed with you, I'm done with you, you know. I could hold malice good and live in the house with you and malice you. And step past you, give the food also and gone. Let me tell you something. So you know that I had that spirit to fight. I came into marriage with that spirit. And I had that spirit to fight. And many of us have many spirits that we need to fight. We have come into the church with all sorts of spirit and we need to fight. Yes, we need deliverance from them because we cannot get to have that true connection, that true relationship with God because these things are hindering us. My God, and the devil has a way of bringing them back, you know, and reminding you he tries to play on your mind. And while you are there, laboring on it, he goes to Jesus to accuse you. Because he's the accuser of the brethren. But let me tell you something. You have something inside of you. The Holy Spirit inside of you. Jesus inside of you. That has never leave you. Will never leave you. Will never forsake you. And he's longing for a relationship with you. Longing to connect with you. I want you to plug into the source. Plug into the source and you will see that the Lord will do great and mighty things through you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I want to say to you that we are reconciled to God through Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Through his blood sacrifice. And if we are reconciled to him... It simply means that we also need to reconcile other persons. Listen to verse 20. It says, We are therefore Christ's ambassador, as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. And when I look at this, I said, this, this verse here sounds like mystery. I went and I said, let me Google what this ambassador. We are called to be ambassadors. We are Christ's ambassador. Come on, we're big enough. You know? When you go to a country and you ask for the ambassador, you know that it's somebody who is representing a country. My goodness. And so as I did my Google search, I came across a term called brand ambassador. Listen to what it means. It is a person who represents and advertises for a company. So we must represent Christ in everything we do. We must advertise Christ in everything we do. I don't think you got that. We must advertise Christ. Our life must advertise Christ. I heard Sister Marsha Clark said it this morning. How the lady came to her on campus and said, Listen, I want to defend Jesus. But we have some Christians in the class. They are the worst persons in the class. 
And it's them the lecturer look on now to say, then if a Christian are going so what? And she said, Holy Spirit, how must I answer this person? And he said, it's in the word. Yes, they are going on and they are doing this. They are not being ambassadors to Christ. But guess what? As they falter, God doesn't give up on that. As they falter, there are examples in the Bible that they can look at and see how God reconciled them to him. Hallelujah. So I want to continue to say that a brand ambassador also acts as an incarnation of the company's corporate identity. So they are the voice for the company. They are the company's eyes. My goodness. It is said that brand ambassadors are experts when it comes on to talking about the brand online and offline. You hear what I say? Online and offline. So if you catch me online, I'm not afraid of the camera. If you catch me online, I can put up a web page. I can advertise this company. I can sell it and make it sell off our way. Nothing go like that. And if you catch me offline, I can promote this country to the best of my ability that you yourself will leave 10 better companies and come to this one. Hallelujah. I want to let you know and I want you to see your position in Christ and what you're called to do. Hallelujah. It is said that a brand ambassador does not need any fixed qualification. You just need to know about the company. You ever go to some place? Just, just, let, me, let me use the Bible experience here. With the little helper girl in Naaman's camp. The little helper girl, quite insignificant. But she knew a God who could heal Naaman's leprosy. She knew a man of God. God who was connected to the source and was hearing from God and could find a solution for Naaman's situation. Hallelujah. Come on, why don't you give him praise and glory here? She did not have any top of the line qualification. She was just seen as a helper girl. And that's what Naaman used to say. Who are you? Why would you tell me to go to the man of God? But she humbled herself and she said, go and try out. Just go and try. Go talk to him. And when he went there and met the answer that he gave him for his solution to go and dip in the river Jordan seven times, the little helper girl said, Listen to him. Obey him. Go and dip. Can I tell you something? That young lady, that helper girl, was an ambassador for God. She knew the power of God and what it can do. And so we as ambassadors for God must know the power, the source that we are connected to. And we must advertise Jesus in our life. We must be able to say to somebody, God can fix your problem for you. You don't have to go out there and look. You don't have to go to mother. You don't have to go to captain. You can get it fixed right here in Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so as Christ ambassador, I want to say to you, advertise him. Show forth what he can do. Testify of his goodness. Everybody in the workplace can be running up and down like headless chicken and you are running up and down when you are connected to the source and you can go in the bathroom and just bust a prayer. Yes, you can just listen, put in your Bluetooth earbud here and just listen to some praise and worship and all that is going around you. You just tune it out. Come on, when you are connected to the source, you must know what your weapon can do because the weapon of our warfares, they are not carnal. They are mighty. They are pulling, powerful through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Come on, give him glory in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to say to you, just like an ambassador, a brand ambassador does not need any fixed qualification. You don't need any. When Christ called you, he qualified you. 
with the Holy Spirit. He said, after that, the Holy Spirit has come upon you. You shall have power to be my witnesses here in Jerusalem and in the uttermost part of the world. Come on. You don't need any form of qualification than the qualification of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. You don't have to be the bishop. You don't have to be an evangelist. You just need to know the message of the gospel. Very simple. That you need to believe on Christ. And once you believe that he died and rose again from the dead, you are saved so you can minister to anybody. Hallelujah. And some of us, when we're going through some problems, you know, you ball like no God no there. Come on. You cry as though God never do anything for you. When you just need to connect to the source, you need to go to him in prayer. You need to say to him, Lord, help my unbelief. Lord, this is what your word says, that I am healed and I am healed. Talk it over your life. Speak it daily in your life. I am healed. I am delivered. I am set free. Pray for the people in your workplace who is running up and down. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My God, remember we are reconciled by the grace of God. We already have the stamped approval of the Holy Spirit. And so we can call on the name of Jesus anytime, anywhere, in any situation. And he will show up. He will Fix it for us. Come on, give him praise and glory in the place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to say to any unsaved who is in our midst that Jesus loves you and he wants you to have a relation. He wants to have a relationship with you. He wants to save you. He wants to deliver you. He wants to set you free from whatever problem, whatever situation, whatever turmoil the enemy has placed upon you. God wants to deliver you from it. And all you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus Christ that he is the son of God. He died for your sins, washed your sins clean with his blood. You just need to get up and say, I am going to accept this gift of God. It has been there for you from before creation. You just need to act it hallelujah you just need to access it because Christ is waiting he's calling and he's just waiting with open arms for you to just say I surrender to you hallelujah hallelujah my God John 1 12 13 says but as many as received him to them gave he power to become the sons of God even to them that believe on his name. Can you imagine you're called a son of God? And look here, it's not just an imagination. It's so it go. It's reality. You are sons and daughters of the most high God. And if Satan can get you to believe otherwise that God does not hear you, he will keep you at that place where you continue to live in your unbelief, your disbelief, believing that God doesn't hear you when you pray. God is not going to answer your prayer. That's a lie from the pit of hell. The devil is a liar. God will come true for you in all of your situations, not just some, in all of your situations. You may not get the answer that you want now, but let me tell you something. My God is an on-time God, and he will come true just when you need him most. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My God, I want to say that instantly, any unsaved in the house are online, instantly, as you accepted the Lord, you are connected to the source. Instantly you are connected. Remember some remember those years when we got but saved very early, they tell you you have to go to converse class for oh, six months. Six months. They're making sure that you're well, well saved. And sometimes some people even better come back. 
when where you, if you had caught them at that in that that interim connection, you could have built on it. Yes, you could have given them a purpose to go on, a reason to continue. But now you're still holding them and having the big stick hanging over them, holding them in their sin. Come on and thinking that how oh, they might sin again. Come on, none of us is perfect. But if we sin, we have an advocate with the Father. Hallelujah. We need to confess our sins to him and he will in no wise cast us out. He will forgive us. Hallelujah. I'm coming down nicely. I want to say to you this morning that you are to plug this afternoon, that you are to plug into the source. Let me tell you how you can do this. Listen to what Jesus said. He said, I am the living bread which come which came down from heaven and if any man eat of this bread he shall live forever and the bread that i will give is my flesh which i will give for the life of the world christ's body was broken his flesh was pierced just for us to have life Come on, people of God. What a great and wonderful thing Christ has done when he engrafted us and when we were engrafted into the family of God through his blood. Hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus. Praise his holy name. So I want to say to you that Christ went on to say in verse 57 of John 6, he says, as the Father, as the living Father hath sent me, and I live by the Father, so he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. It's not just communion alone, you know. The word, the word. When you live by the word of God, yes, the Father himself will come. Jesus himself will also cause you to live by his word. It is a word that will shape us up, you know. It is a word that will convict us. It is a word that will empower us. And so it will give us the, the, the ultimate reason for living and why we need to continue living and cause us to just keep going back for more and more. Hallelujah. So I want to wrap up by saying to you that when the father sent Jesus, he didn't just leave him alone. We see that in John 10 verse 38, where it says, the father hath not left me alone, for I do all, all, all those things, all those things that pleased him. And so the father was in Jesus. He said, what I spoke, I didn't speak it of myself. I spoke it of my father. He said, whatever I did, I didn't do it on my own. Because I'm here to do my father's will. I did it because the father dwelleth in me. He doeth all the work. So all the miracles, yes, all the casting out of demons, all the healing of sick. It was done through the father who lived in Christ Jesus. And I can tell you this. I can assure you that we too have the father living inside of us why do you think jesus said to his disciples that when i go greater works than what i do you will do because he knows that the father lives inside of them hallelujah i want to let you know that the godhead lives in us the godhead lives in us and the godhead has control over every principality and power. You, you're not, not like a pure, pure people, you know. The Godhead which has control over all principality and power lives inside of you and you sit down and make the pressures of life weighing you down. You don't know what you have. I want to implore you today to connect to the source. Go in some prayer. Go into some fasting and call on the name of Jesus and put him on your situation. I want to say to you that last year, July, I had a dream. 
that I'm to go on three weeks fasting. Rev, I tell myself that I'm not going on any more 21 days fasting. And I said to the lady in the dream, look here, I cannot manage a 21 day fasting. I remember seeing Sister Dorothy in the dream. And the lady, I don't know the lady who was there talking to me, but she held on to me and she said, you have two communities inside of you. I don't know what this community is. And she said, you need to go on the 21 days fasting. She said, why don't you try the Daniel fast? And I went on that 21 days fasting. And it was a great sacrifice. Because I went on all couples retreat in a rev. I'm a dip and fasting in a rev. With all of that food. My, I eat green bush so till. I eat green bush so till. But when I went on that fast. And I went on that couples retreat. You think God don't know what he's doing? You see the Friday night when we were going down. The Friday when we were going down. I had a sister from Reddit Zoo came. So even if Mr. Williams didn't want to do anything. I had company. My sister from Reddit's lady. You know who we're talking. Was there. And just right on that, so you know, it's a weekend of just me and God alone. And I was now coming to the close of the fast. And on the 18th day of the fast, I kept praying about these two communities that were inside of me. And on the 18th day, I must tell you, I was praying like nothing. I was just praying and praying for Tiffany at the time. I was praying for Brother Neville Jones because I believe they were the two communities. And let me tell you something, on the 18th day, the Holy Spirit said, those two communities are your knees. Yes, I had problems with them. I had problems with them. I was going to physiotherapy, and the Holy Spirit said, those two communities are your knees. So you see, when, I, when I'm walking, and I'm going down here, so I have to turn, so, and go down, so, I have to turn, so. I'm going nice, I want to know what I'm going, but guess what? You see, no, I, can't, I don't have to turn that way. Because I had to go down and put the other foot on the step like that. Down and put the, no. Eh, I can now walk forward and I'm stepping down. And I'm going down. I'm not feeling any pain. I'm going up and I'm not feeling any pain. And I want to tell you, I just cut off physiotherapy because I used to go to physiotherapy two times a week for the knees. And just that, that obedience to the Holy Spirit. I'm talking about connected to the source. Just that obedience to the Holy Spirit. I can testify to you today. That when you are connected to the source. When you obey the source. You can get great and mighty things done in your life. Through the power of Christ that is invested in you. Talking about the weapons of our warfare. They are not carnal. My God. That was just prayer. And fasting and reading the word of God and seeking God because I wanted to know what these two communities were. And now I can run, I can jump. I used to be afraid to lift up off the ground. You would never get me do this. Never. I was afraid to lift up off the ground. And now I am as good as new. Why don't you just give him some praise in the house? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to say to you, brethren, as you stand with me, stand with me. I want to say to you that we have something inside of us that is not ordinary. We have the Holy Spirit. We have God the Father. We have God the Son living inside of us. And all we need to do is to spend time building our relationship with him so we can hear from him as we are connected to the source he will pour out he will show us great and mighty things the holy spirit is a revealer of the mysteries of god and he will reveal things unto us you don't have to go to bishop 
or Reverend Jennifer Brown and tell them to pray for you. You just make your own connection with the Godhead who lives inside of you and he will show up in your situation. Hallelujah. We just want to bless the name of Jesus. I wish I could go on and on and I wish could share the testimonies, but I want to just lift up the name of Jesus. And I want to give somebody an opportunity. Somebody who is not yet connected to the source. I want to give you an opportunity to come and see and taste of the Lord that he is good. You too can be connected to the source and experience the power of Almighty God. Hallelujah. Do we have any unsaved in the house? Any unsaved? We invite you to come to an altar of prayer. You want us to pray with you. You don't have that connection. You don't know what it is to experience the glory of God and the power of God in your life. Today is the day of salvation. Today you can make that connection. I invite you to come. Hallelujah. Come on, let us pray with you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is there one unsaved in the house? Come on, let us pray with you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't walk out of here today and don't get that connection. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. While they are making up their minds, if you have wondered, if you have been buffeted as a Christian and you need your connection to be strengthened you can come also we will pray with you you need to have a stronger connection hallelujah you need to strengthen your relationship hallelujah you can come and let us pray with you also hallelujah thank you jesus sing that song sing that song falling in love hallelujah. with jesus Falling in love with Jesus Hallelujah. was the best thing I've ever, Hallelujah. ever done. In his arms. Come on, falling in love in his arms. In his arms. In his arms. Jesus. I feel, I feel Hallelujah. protected in his arms. is right turn your bluetooth on because if you don't do that you will not have the connection 
that you need. Turn on back the prayer. Turn on back the reading of the word. Turn on back the meditation. Hallelujah. Because you need to have that connection with the almighty God. And when you have that connection, anything can happen in your life, in your family life the life of your community, the life of the church. But turn back on the connection. Don't cut off connection because if you do that, you have no relationship and your source of power is totally gone. So I ask you just to turn it back on. It's prayer time, my brothers and sisters. And if you are there and you know that the connection is gone, Turn it back on. Full surrender to the Almighty God that you can get the victory and the deliverance that you need. Almighty Creator, we thank you for your word. Thank you for your daughter. Oh God, that has ministered the word oh God thank you for the connection that you have given that we can have the victory over the adversary God we thank you for those who have come to the altar God we know that Satan wants to break off all connections oh God Oh, with you, Lord. But this afternoon, we lift up your children to you one more time. And we pray, oh God, that they will submit and surrender. And cause that the connection, oh, there will be a reconnection. Oh God, that uh, as they move forward, deliverance will be secured victory will be assured oh god we pray that as they turn on the connection again they will understand that they have in them oh god the power of the trinity oh god the power of Father, Son and the Holy Ghost oh God to overcome any trial, any situation, any temptation any difficulty because God if they have you they have uh, everything God we lift up your children again to you and we ask your God that they will walk away from here knowing that they have the Almighty with them. And that God, if they have the Almighty, then they have the source, the power to overcome any obstacle and any situation and be a conqueror in the name of Jesus. I raise them up to you again. God, I ask you that your heavenly benediction would rest, remain, and abide with them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen and amen. God bless you, my brothers, my sisters. As you go and keep the connection because my Brothers and sisters, that's our source of victory. If you lock off the connection, you have no power. You have no victory. You have no source of deliverance. God bless you, Sister Williams, as you continue to work for the Lord. Praise God. At this time, we will be having the announcements. Here are the announcements for this week. 
Fasting service will be held on Tuesday starting at 10 a.m. The Women's Ministry is inviting members who are baptized between September and March of any year to a birthday bash on Tuesday starting at 7 p.m. Come and celebrate your birthday in Christ. Bible study will be held on Wednesday starting at 6.30 p.m. Prayer meeting will be held on Saturday morning starting at 6.30. The National Life Builders Men's Ministry will be holding a Young Men's Empowerment Session on March 23 at the Maypen Church. Men between 20 to 40 years old are asked to speak with Brother Andre Cowan. Pastors and Leaders Impact Conference will be held on Wednesday, April 3 at the Old Harbor Church starting at 9 a.m. Leaders who are desirous of attending are asked to submit their names to the church's office. Fun in the Sun will be held on Saturday, April 20 at the National Stadium. Those who would like to assist in various ways are asked to speak with Reverend Garfield Blair. Members are also encouraged to plan to go along with their families, especially their unsaved loved ones. There is no admission cost. Tickets for Basil Dawkins' play, Once Upon a Watch Night, are available at the office or from any member of the rally team at a cost of $3,000. Church Harvest will be held on Sunday, April 28. Members and friends who plan to participate by donating different items are asked to speak with Brother Errol Jones. The Eastwood Park Road District Women's Retreat will be held from May 3 to 5 at the Jamaica Deaf Village, Shooters Hill in Manchester. Contribution forms for Rally 2024 may be obtained from Sisters Carol Hines, Rosemary Mullings, or any member of the rally team. What is... What happened? My rally card, but me just can't understand nothing about this rally. Me not understand, me not understand, me not I don't know what this for. And this you for. don't understand your rally card? It's a pledge card. This one's a contribution card. Let oh. me explain, let me explain. This is your rally pledge card, but you use a contribution card to get the money to put on the pledge card. Oh. If you don't want to take it out of your bank account, because some people don't like begging. You know. So in case you can, you can take it out of your bank account mm -hmm. if you don't want to beg. But use your pledge card and make it help you. Call the families, a friend, call them overseas, anybody okay. you know, okay. and let them help you make your pledge. All right. 100,000? No, ma'am, I have about 200, 200 for me. Oh, you look like you're going for the prize yes. where me I go for, you know, so there's a price. prize too? Yes, there there's a prize. Weekend for two, dinner for two, gift vouchers, and much, much more. You know, so you know, for the first prize. You know, the you, first prize, the first prize you know, for me. You know, you can't be yourself. <laughs> All right. All right, so you Let's can see. maybe go for the dinner for two, but I will get the, no, the so. weekend for two. A long time in a so everybody, ten, so. let mm. us rally 2024. Rally 2024. See you there. See you there. The Eastwood Park Road New Testament Church of God Youth Department presents its first youth rally. And guess who is invited? You are invited. Your friends are invited. Your neighbors are invited. Your whole family is invited. So come on out on Friday, March 22, 2024, right here at the Eastwood Park Road New Testament Church of God, 51 Eastwood Park Road. You don't want to miss this. Come on out, support, because it's one move, one law. Let's go! Members and friends are reminded that they may make financial contributions using our card machine. Representatives from the clerk's office will be at the back of the church and upstairs to assist you to present your tithe or offering using that method. Congress t-shirts are now available at a cost of $1,500. Orders may be placed using the Google form, which is being sent out in the WhatsApp groups, or contact any leader of the youth department for assistance. The children's department has Declare Your Faith t-shirts on sale. Please see sisters Trudy and Henry or Katie and Hines or place your order at the church's office. Members, you are encouraged to pray for our brothers and sisters who are unwell. 
Their names are listed on the notice board at the back of the sanctuary. The funeral service for the brother of Brother Joseph Scarlett will be held on Saturday, March 23 in Westmoreland. Those who are desirous of accompanying Brother Scarlett may speak with him for further details. Congratulations to those who will be celebrating their birthdays and wedding anniversaries this week. We trust you will have an enjoyable day and may God richly bless you. Have a glorious week in the Lord, my brethren. All right, if you're here this week and you're celebrating your birthday, we're inviting you to stand so we can celebrate with you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. And do we have any anniversaries in the house? We're inviting you to stand with us as we celebrate with you. Or online, you can just put it in the chat. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary. Ooh. Happy anniversary. God bless you. And while Rev is coming, just a reminder of our youth rally this Friday. At 6.45, you don't want to miss it, the first ever. So we want you to come on out with your purses, your wallets, enough money, and come and support the youths. God bless you. Over to Rev. Praise God. All right, so you can't leave the youths by themselves. You have to help them out. So please, um, the, the rally comes up this week. And we ask you to give the, your fullest support. Walk with our money. All right? Because it's rally. And rally means money. Come with your worship first, but also come with your money as well. God bless you. Let me just endorse the congratulatory message to all those who are celebrating your birthdays. God bless you. Trust you, this will be the best one that you have had yet. And for the anniversary persons, we wish you continued long and lasting love. I want to just let you know, um, oh, before I say that, I want to... I think I missed one of my paper there. Um, I, I'm, I am told that Sister Danielle and her, oh yes, all right, and Ramon as well, could you please stand? Yes, they were in first service as well, and you know, the people really, it was a glad reunion with them especially with Daniel, of course, because um, I guess she has taken Ramon with her because she found him when she went away. So we want to thank God. Give them a hand again. God bless you. Great to have you. I'm told that she was really um, deeply engaged in ministry before she left. God bless you. We are so delighted to have you. God bless you. And then, my brothers and sisters, um, we also want you to know that Sister Maria Howell is not doing well, and so we need to pray for her. Also, Sister Carly Nemard is asking for prayer. Um, she's going to be doing... Sister Carlin, oh, yes, yeah, she will be doing su a surgery, and so she wants to, us to pray for her. Could you come at this time? Um, and she needs blood as well, all right? So she needs blood as well, so all those who can donate, 
we ask you please please consider that no come please consider that because that is very significant my brothers and sisters could you just stand with us we're going to be praying for sister carlene we ask you okay so she will be doing the surgery at ue all right so we want to cover her we also want to lift up sister howell all right um because she is also not doing well let us look to the lord for our sister and let us claim god's deliverance i believe we have a connection with god and we can receive anything hallelujah that we ask him let us trust god for her father in the name of jesus christ of nazareth we come on behalf of our sister your servant sister carlene oh god she will be undergoing surgery she needs blood but she more than all she needs your touch right now in the name of jesus christ of nazareth we pray that that blood oh hallelujah that was shed on the cross that has never lost its power oh god will surge through her because we know that divine healing is provided for all in that atoning blood so we pray that you'll touch her and the blood would flow through her and that deliverance and healing and victory would come to your daughter oh god God, we pray that even as she goes to do that surgery, oh God, it will be revealed that the master doctor, oh God, has already done his surgery. And oh God, everything is all right. We pray that everything will be all right. We pray that everything will be all right in accordance with your will. Touch her now. Touch her, touch her now, touch her now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And we pray that it shall be well. Oh God, touch somebody's heart that they will go. And if needs be, oh, if the blood is needed, that it will be sufficient. Oh God, and, uh, and you'll touch the hands of the doctors. Oh, hallelujah, that they will skillfully oh god do what needs to be done hallelujah we thank you god for your deliverance and for your victory we lift up sister howell to you and we pray oh god that that same blood that same healing blood oh hallelujah will touch her and heal her and deliver her in the name of jesus christ of nazareth thank you Thank you for your touch. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. And amen. And amen. Hallelujah. God bless you. My brothers and sisters, please be informed that Third Tuesday Clinic resumes this Tuesday right here, starting at 10 o'clock. All right? So as you come, for fasting, you can come also to the clinic. All right? So God bless you richly. Thank you so much. I want you to know before we do the benediction that on Good Friday, when's that? The 29th of March will be baptismal service and will be Lord's Supper. Hello. We want it to be a celebration in this place. And so my brothers and sisters, I ask you, not only that you should come out, but invite somebody out on Good Friday, as we will be doing communion, and then we will be baptizing 
all the candidates that are ready coming out of the crusade and beyond. So we look forward to that. As I say, let us come together and celebrate the death of Jesus Christ because that's why we can bask in his glory. I look forward to seeing you here. God bless you richly. Um, to that end, I would like, if possible, all the candidates and those who were baptized recently to meet me this Friday, um, if it is at all possible. Please make every effort. I need to see you. Um, the time looks a little bit, you know, clustered for me going forward. Might not get the opportunity again. And so, Friday of this week, if you can make it, I ask you please to make every effort. If you know those who are calling um, those young converts, I ask you to just let them know that I need to um, have some conversation with them before. Um, yes, well, if they can come six, that would be great. All right? Six o'clock, try to make it at six. God bless you richly. Could you please stand, my brothers and sisters? Once again, we ask you to just cover the woman of God as she continues to pray. Give her a hand. <laughs> Praise God. Thanks for the word, Sister Faithlin. Let us do the benediction. And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you. And give you his peace both now and forevermore. And all of God's precious people say, God bless you richly as you go home.